get a room, you two. Uh -huh. <laughs> so excited. A man clutch. <laughs> hey, I, I also want to acknowledge our director of photography on this is, is uh, quite an amazing individual, Jeremy Pardon. I, 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 just a little applause there. He's not with us today, but he deserves, he deserves to. And, and, and the things he does are unthinkable. Like, John. I swear we're going to get to your question in a minute. Uh, it'll be just a minute. You should have gone to the Marvel panel. Uh, John, if you can, it, you do everything to scale on these films. It's not really up there anymore. I was pointing. It's still on film. Um, you do everything to scale, though, right? I mean, if you can, if you can put it on screen, you can build it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the robot. We have some. We have some uh, amazing guys in our office that can build all this stuff. And when we uh, design the Joker robot, um, they tend to try and make sure it works physically. So you could actually build a Joker robot out of you know, proper Lego. Um, it would be 11,802 pieces and would stand around about six foot tall. Um, and then the, the lovely uh, Lex's big v VTOL ship that the Joker knocked down the building, that's over 20,000 Lego pieces in there. Uh, that now Lex has to put back together again. So, um, now if you think the Millennium Falcon collector's edition that Lego do is about five and a half thousand pieces, you get an idea of the, the size of these things we build. And they all work. You can, you can download the instructions, I'm sure, for these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it hard getting into the Lego mindset? I mean, I'm watching and, and we've got even the Green Lantern constructs are, are, are Lego assembling before you. Yeah, absolutely. And Lego gives us great freedom to do all that kind of great stuff and, and what we uh, we tend to do is obviously look at something like Batman and think well what does Lego add to that property and obviously when we invented a, a device for Lex that could pull apart Lego anything made of black Lego and then Robin figures out halfway through the movie that it doesn't affect ordinary Lego and then, Lego, and then Robin who can, who can build stuff because he's a kid all kids are great at building Lego you know saves the day uh, you know in a situation Batman couldn't get out of. and then of course it gives us the great gag where Batman and Superman have changed costumes midway through and because they look identical as figures, we can get away with that kind of gag all day long. So Lego, it, it just gives you so much more uh, to play with. It gives such great fun. We, you can applaud if you like. It's good. It's good. Never hold you back your applause at a time. It's just let it loose because that's what we're here for. Um, uh, we've got most of the cast. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the one original voice from the uh, original series, Lex Luthor, Clancy Brown, who will unfortunately be back today. But, uh, we had a lot of fun with Clancy. Uh, anybody remember his favorite line? Spreading Joker's gas. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't have a lot of fun spreading Joker's gas. I can't do Clancy Brown. <laughs> who could? Clancy Brown. <laughs> but he's not here. Clancy Brown. <laughs> so we're going to talk about yeah, all of you voice actors. You're coming in um, doing some very iconic voices of the series and of the films. And I know you, you're respectful of that. What are the challenges to creating a Batman, a Superman, a Harley Quinn, Robin, Joker, Joker, uh, and having to live with those voices in the back of your head that you, you grew up with and know and trying to do it differently, but you were respectful. I, we all had that challenge, especially you, Chris. That was a hard one for me. I mean, growing up watching Batman the Animated Series and then all Woo! the generations that Batman has been in, you know, Kevin Conroy is. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Woo! So, um, I think when we all walked into that, because we all auditioned for this just like every other actor schmuck, we're like, please give us a job. Um, <laughs> We all walked in and kind of kicked our shoes off because we knew that we were walking into hallowed ground because not only were these iconic characters, but this was also the first time that Lego was going to add voices to one of their movies and games. So that was that was a kind of fun one. And you you just, you put your hands on your hips and you did it. Oh yeah. Be, <laughs> he I'd, did. I'd be lying if I didn't say I went out and bought a Superman t-shirt and wore that under a hoodie and in the middle of the session found a tasteful time to unzip it as heroically as I could. <laughs> <laughs> people laughed and other ones shook their head. <laughs> I got a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris? Yeah, very, very big clown shoes to fill. Um, and I don't think, uh, I, I didn't try. Um, when, we, when we 
set out to record this, Mark Hamill had just retired. And so I didn't approach it. I couldn't, it would have, it would have been too nerve wracking for me to go, okay, I'm picking up where he left off. No, this was just my chance to, to play this wonderful, fun, iconic character. Uh, I went back and I and I watched so many of the other old iterations of the Joker from uh, from the movies. I mean, the Jack Nicholson one and the Heath Ledger and Mark Hamill, of course. Back to Larry Storch, who did it for the Super Friends back in the seventies. Wow. And I just tried to just tried to give it give it my own spin. Um, I, I approached it kind of dark at first, dark and, and twisted, and they reined me in and said, "No, it's Lego." <laughs> <laughs> really not going to do all of these horrible things um, and so we, uh, we, we again reined him in and, and wound up finding a place where I think he's he's still uh, a little threatening but but fun and dangerous and silly. Can I, can I talk? Yeah, I'm hoping you will, Charlie. I hope that was needed to go to the bathroom. Or no. <laughs> these guys are, are all so talented and they do so many great voices that, that when they were casting this, they had to, to dig into that bag of talent to decide what they were going to bring to the project. I, on the other hand, have this voice. <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony, and therefore I just basically did this, which was kind of easy for me. <laughs> but I will say, honestly, I, and I think this goes for everybody, but as far as our voice director, Cam Clark, who's not here, um, when we all did audition, I don't think he held us up to any standard. I think he basically just wanted to see what each one of us brought to the table and, uh, and just sort of nurtured it from there. So it, it's rare that you get to do a, a hero or, or something of this magnitude where you are allowed to just sort of be free with the material. Sure. Don't knock anything over. I'm not, no, not yet. And Laura had multiple voices. That I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Travis and Laura are married. <laughs> oh. not a joke, not a joke. Woo. Uh, I'm glad you brought up Clam Clark because that was a good point. Actually, three of the original Ninja Turtles are in this. Cam yeah. Clark, who not only voice directed but uh, uh, filled in as uh, Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter. Rob Paulson was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just say that in the streets. Like Rob crazy. contingent back then. Yeah. He filled in with uh, the Riddler, and and uh, and and uh, he was obviously Raphael in the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and Steve Blum. Is Steve still here? Steve's here? <laughs> he hit. He ran us in. He snuck out. He's, he's quick. Steve was here, and he was uh, he was our Penguin and Bane, and he came to see the film with you guys. So. Fans and also nice. do the voices, huh? Guinness World Record holder, Steve Lowe. <laughs> what? True story. He holds the record for the most recorded, uh, or most video game appearances, I no think. No way. He's in the Guinness yeah. World Record. He's in the Guinness World, World Record. That's Steve awesome. Yeah, you look, yeah, you're so plotting. You're like, what's that? Look, <laughs> uh, how, how? Do you want to be on the panel? Is that the, where we're going with this? Yeah. There's I think that's actually the same kid from New York. Yeah. <laughs> First time fine too. by the time you're 35. Uh, hey, that opening title sequence, and the, uh, you guys love that, didn't you? And, uh, using the music, the iconic music, the John Williams tunes from Batman, or Elfman tunes from Batman, and Williams from, from uh, Superman. I love the way you're looking at me like you don't know what's coming. Uh, when, when, how, was it, how important was it to use that music, and was it difficult to acquire? Um, yeah, I mean, I grew up with the, the sort of 1989 Batman, you know, I have the same last name. Um, it was an obvious gag to pull to end up with the, uh, the Tim Burton, John Burton, Lego Batman. Um, so, uh, but for buy-in, really, I mean, we try and appeal to kids and adults the same. And although you've got no one's movies, which are amazing, you know, I just kind of grew up with the, the Danny Elfman score. Um, and what I said, you know, I was in New York, we did this in New York, and I said the Robbie, the Robbie Williams score, which... <laughs> Not sure where I was going with that. One. The John Williams score. Yeah, I grew up with those things. We wanted to put those in at the start, really, just to make you feel as familiar as you could with the franchise. So that when we played with the characters and we, and we took liberties in other areas, it felt safe to do so. We didn't want to change so much stuff that it that it didn't appeal to everybody, which is what we tried to do. So it was critically important. And we had to. Uh, one of us, I think, owns the music, but not the rights to the recordings. So we went out and hired an orchestra and we recorded all the tracks. So the start and end themes 
are other ones that were recorded for the, for the movies, the, the original movies, and then all the other tracks from the, from the albums and a, a load of original music we went out and re-recorded with, with an orchestra. So we just wanted to get everything right for this movie to make it feel as authentic a uh, Batman piece as possible. You have, I know we had a good time recording it. Do each of you have a favorite scene now that you've watched it at least once? I still, I, I, Charlie cracked me up both in the recordings and I mean, it literally, I, I, we got like ripped abs because of laughing so hard. We had them, we don't have them anymore. So, uh, it's like a two day period. Uh, but I wasn't, no, trying, I wasn't I, trying to be funny, Troy. I still. <laughs> Um, I still love, I, I think one of the, my favorite lines is either the, we are not going to call Superman. <laughs> that one, and, and it's still is one of Clancy lines for me, one of my favorite moments in it is when Joker says, we're still going to destroy Bruce Wayne. He goes, yeah, sure, fine. It's the shoulder shrug that gets me. Actually, some of my favorite moments were, uh, were done with the animation. Uh, I laugh. Every time that Superman and Batman walk into the elevator, they turn around and then Batman strikes this <laughs> ready pose. And there's actually a camera move in Luther's factory as they're moving through the ground floor and the camera hits the worker behind his face. <laughs> I just think that's absolutely well, brilliant. Yeah. die laughing when we watch that at home. Um, that and uh, and all of the penguin stuff in the background. And he's escaping. <laughs> yeah, in the background of Arkham and in the background of every scene. I just love to watch them run. <laughs> it's like, yes, that's exactly the way they should run. I love that. Um, for me, in, in recording, uh, the, the interchanges between the Joker and Lex Luthor were so much fun to do. They paired up Clancy and I like an old married couple. And just bickering at each other and, and I had so much fun. I enjoyed your singing voice very much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah the Buffalo Gals. Yeah. I think you're putting out an album. <laughs> yeah, but as Lego Joker. Of course. Yeah, to be safe. Charlie. Oh, I get answered. Uh, I, I, I agree with Travis. I think, uh, I think what John did is unbelievable. I mean, we sit there and we record our, our little show as a radio play, and we all sort of, you know, make fart noises and make each other laugh. But, I mean, John... It's brilliant. You just take this thing to a whole other inconceivable level that just blows my mind. I mean, every little subtlety and, and you know, what Laura said about the penguin in the back or, and, you know, I love watching Robin uh, and when his little mouth is quivering and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. and he cries, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you, everything, it's like, it's like you really cared about this movie or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Honestly, it's, it was amazing. I love the scratch marks and like the finger smudges that you can see on the Lego. Yeah. I want to go home and play Legos right yes. now. Yes. Yes. With so. you, Troy. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody out yeah, there got play Legos? I'm tired. I've done my Sorry. job. Inside. Well, there's a microphone right there. You got to line up behind it. Oh, and there are a couple of rules about this. We'll sit down. Look at those kids you're pushing out of the way. Jeez. <laughs> How do you get it down? You have to stand on your tiptoes or some nice person in the row come over. There we go. Every okay, time so I record, rules, rules. they have to lower the microphone for me too. So. <laughs> I'm with you. Simple rules. Number one, you got to say your name when you ask the question. Number two, you got to ask a question. Don't just tell us how good you like Legos. And number three, be respectful. And you might win a prize if it's a really good question. Okay, go. My name is Alexia. Um, how does the Joker um do the like? How does the gas only does it for the Joker? <laughs> you know how um he um like Luther was gonna be president after that it only worked for the Joker. How does? I love that a nine-year-old is asking a narrative question. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Chris. <laughs> well, I, go get him, Chris. I could explain it to you, but that would be telling. <laughs> and we can't have that. <laughs> uh, is that a, is that a, is that a
cop-out answer? Is that, you know, let me get away with that? Or you want to you talk chemistry? <laughs> She's a fine. Good, good, because you haven't been through high school chemistry and failed it, so. <laughs> okay, Alexia, thank you. Thank you. For you you're not going to get a better answer than that. You have a smile, and we'll take a seat, and I might call your name a little later, Alexia. Hi, my name's Chris. She won't that, 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 That's the best moment of the con so far. Uh, sorry. Chris, talk to us. Uh, my question is, why wasn't a hot girl included in the Justice League? What? Or a hot girl. Oh, a hot girl. Yeah, hot. A hot girl. Oh, I don't know. She was on vacation that <laughs> week when we were recording. Oh, so Saying hot girl? Yeah. I know. No, I hot. thought he said a hot girl. I was like, hot girl. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Wasn't in the budget. Oh, Couldn't oh, afford. Oh. Couldn't include everybody. Yeah. All right. So I, I think um, I think there are actually union rules, and Laura was not allowed to do more voices. Yeah. Right. So. I was stuck with three. So yeah. yeah. We Regulations. <laughs> I love it. Check out check out the sequel, Chris. Yeah. She might be in there. All right, thank you. Yeah, right. Keep those cards ready. I'm for you, hawk girl. Hello, my name's Bruno. Yes. Um, throughout the movie, I was looking at Batman and how he like didn't really want Superman's like help. Like, does he is he jealous? Like, no. <laughs> jealous because like is that he has no powers and he does? Or... Look, you know. I'm not jealous. <laughs> I just don't like him. <laughs> goody goody two shoes. Don't you just love this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's it's something that, especially if you're a fan of uh, Justice League or you know going back to DC Comics, there's always this kind of you know rivalry between Superman and Batman, even like Doomsday, especially. Um, but sorry, I was tapping my foot. It's driving Laura crazy. Uh, but, and I love that we could kind of make that more available to, to it's kind of a darker DC storyline, like we could bring that in there. I think it's hilarious. And the overall, you know, story moral, the, the moral of the story, there we go, uh, is that everybody needs help sometimes. I kind of wanted them to break into like, either the Beatles or the version of... That would be great at the very end. be included on the Joker album. That's it. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's just really coming together well. Yeah. Joker's I like it. I missed your name. Huh? Bruno. 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 Okay, thank you, Bruno. Thank, thank you. you, Bruno. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Sandy. Hi, Sandy. First, I want to say thank you for your birthday tomorrow, right? So happy birthday. Yes, tomorrow's my birthday. Oh, yay! I'm calling you my favorite too. Literally took no effort on my part. Or in participation, I just have to be alive. <laughs> and second, this is Lego. I'm just curious if any of you built with Lego as a child or as an adult, and if there's a certain set that sticks out in your mind that you really liked or I, I tried to build a Lego TIE fighter once, and it says like ages four and up. I couldn't do it. <laughs> so, you were 28. That's 12, like, yeah. That was last week. <laughs> My sister and I used to build cities all across our living room. Yeah. Yeah, hello. <laughs> My son had uh, had a lot of Legos when he was growing up, and he had the really great sets. He had the, the Star Wars and the Harry Potter and the, and the, the you know, Batman and things like that. When I was growing up, we had like DC, uh, we had the Lego log cabins, Lego Ooh. caves. But there were bigger pieces back then. They it was were, yeah. Lego yeah. There were two, and they would snap <laughs> together. Like, it was like a that set of exactly Legos. Yeah. Yeah. The brick. <laughs> Look, I made a square. Build a Lego box. <laughs> <laughs> Lego circle. Our Lego yeah. triangle came out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Thanks. All right, Captain America is finally here. Yeah! Now is when you want to talk. I want to talk! Okay, he wants to talk. Hi, Matthew, and this is Aiden. I uh, apologize for him being very Captain Aiden. boisterous. It's mine! What did you. I had. A tummy twisted. <laughs> the, the twist in it, when I saw in the movie, why did the Bible get to broke all into pieces? And what if water Bible come? 
<laughs> How did Batman? I was tracking with it the entire way, actually. Right. Holy! Right. Yeah. I did not expect that. That's the compound's question. Aiden, brilliant. We're going to ask you to sit down and be quiet while they answer. Okay? Can you do that? Okay. Go sit. Go sit down. Now. 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 Quick question from Dad: Was this uh, envisioned as a movie and a game at the same time, and pre-produced like that? Or? Uh, it, was, it was produced as a. We, <clears throat> I'll try again. We wanted to make a Lego Batman sequel. Um, we didn't really want to use the Dark Knight because it, we just thought it was tracking too old for kids. So we decided we'd have to make our own movie to parody. So we created script row, recorded all the voices, did all the animatics, and laid out the movie. And then we looked at the movie and said, "Right, let's turn this into a video game." So we created the movie so that we could make a video game from it. Um, and the movie took a lot longer to get perfect than the video game did, as it turned out. <laughs> um, what was the original question? Why, does, why did the Batmobile blow up like that? Is it made out of black bricks? And where did Robins come from? Oh, okay. I can, yeah, sure. So, so Lex Luthor invented a device using a strange energy that can pull apart black, any Lego that's black. The black Lego, that color absorbs this energy and pulls it apart, and it only works on black Lego. And Batman has indestructible toys normally that can't break, so he, he pulled it all apart. Robin was back at the Batcave <laughs> using all the bits and pieces he found. He built a Batmobile, because he's good at building Lego, even though not everything works. The last thing he built worked, and he saved the day. Captured your story. I don't know how I'm going to follow that excitement. Um, Tough choice there. <laughs> Question for John. Um, it looks like you're going to open this up to like a sequel, or you're going to continue on with this. Are you going to use smaller <laughs> heroes like Doctor Fate, Captain Marvel, or Question? And we, yeah, he's making those stock answer would be we'd love to do a sequel. It's clearly set up for one. Um, you know, there's a negotiation with Lego DC, a whole bunch of people. We we we'd love to make a, a sequel and get a whole bunch of different characters in there. We have to. I mean, we appeal to kids and adults alike. And I think we love putting in cameos of perhaps the less familiar to kids' characters, which is great to have experience of that. We also need to go and pick up the characters that kids are going to know about. So it's a careful balance between sort of the fans and the, and the, and the great characters that are lesser known, and also making sure there's enough of the, uh, of the well-known characters so the kids can follow the story and understand, understand who the characters are. Because we only have 70 minutes to introduce from scratch a whole bunch of characters that the kids wouldn't necessarily know. But who is it specifically? Is it? Got that Captain Marvel down. So what was your name? Tyler. Next. Mr. Mason Jar, is that what you said? I'm just making up heroes over here. <laughs> Captain Spatula. <laughs> Spatula Man. My name is uh, Dave. Um, I enjoyed the film very much. <clears throat> a very similar question to the previous gentleman. Uh, Why did the battle be long? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any plans to make uh, a Marvel-related movie, or perhaps make this into a weekly TV show? Some of them. We'd love to. We'd love yeah, to. I mean, there's a question. Yeah. Yeah. I like that question. Yeah, the actors yeah. just saw wonderful. You want to ask that one again? <laughs> um, I can't talk about Marvel because they didn't fly me over here. Um, but we are making the Marvel video game. Um, the. Um, what was the second part of the question, sorry? We, oh, the TV we, show. Yeah. weekly show. Yeah, we'd love to do the show. The only reason, the only way we get to do a show is if everyone buys lots and lots of copies of our film. Uh, Go out and buy this. Guys, the more likely we'll get to do more stuff. So, yeah. so wait and see how it does. So. You'll have a power. May 21st. Thank you, Dave. May 21st, available on Blu-ray, DVD, talent. Thank you. By the game. <laughs> yes, Batman. Speak to us. Hi, my name is Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> really? Sure. Really? I, I think you're. I think you're missing something on your face. Uh, uh, okay. Alfred's taking care of me. Uh, um, I have so many questions, but can I? Just one. Okay. Uh, how did Cyborg find out that the bat cable was broken? <laughs> how did Cyborg find out the bat cable was broken? Okay. Internet. So right, you're going for plot holes. Uh, <laughs> Martian Manhunter told them all. You didn't see it on camera, but he let them know that Jack is playing the back cave and they've got to go stop the robot. Uh, and, he, and, and Martian Manhunter knew because he's got a thing in the tower that 
detects any kind of seismic uh, in the watchtower, seismic uh, anomalies. But it takes about 15 minutes for that to come through. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bruce. We'll be collecting John's wallet. Those are all the now. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Hi, my name is Don Castillo. Uh, my question is for John. Uh, as a director, uh, what was your most difficult obstacle in bringing this uh, to life? And by that same token, what was your most proudest moment that just, as a director that just made you give you know, the biggest smile and that big, awesome victory thrust? Okay, so the hardest uh, bit is actually persuading, persuading Lego that this would be a good thing to do. Um, you know, they've done the video games with us, and um, we had to prove that we uh, Prove that we could make movies because this this movie was made with the video game guys. I mean that was rendered on our video game engine. Uh, we did the whole lot in house. We, we didn't do anything. We didn't go extend for anything. So the first, that was the hardest thing was getting Lego on board. The proudest thing I love seeing Lex's VTOL get smashed into thousands of pieces. Um, I love how seeing that voices with such an incredible talent can bring such entertainment and comedy to life from the from the characters that we'd work with sort of eight years in various different things. Um, so my name is Amber, and um, I have a main question for Troy and Travis. So Lego and Warner Bros. already announced they're making a hybrid live-action CGI Lego movie, and Lego Batman and Superman are going to be in it. Are you guys going to uh, redo your role in that movie? For now, we're not. Um, they're, I think they're using... We learned that. Yeah. Right. Channing Tatum. We learned Channing Tatum. Which is cool. It we don't always get the chance to, to you know, reprise our roles like we do with this, but I mean... Honestly, it's going to be done after this, because this, this was kind of a, for both of us as, as huge comic book nerds as Batman and Superman. But if you want to do a sequel, I mean, they'd be down for it and stuff. That's just, you know. That's would, cool, too. I wouldn't recast for the sequel, if there was a sequel. I'd stick with these ones. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, okay. $20 here. What's that going on your side, Phil John? Can I ask one little thing for you? Can you yes. just say, I'm Batman? I'm Batman. Thanks. <laughs> And uh, stick a little there. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Hi, my name is William. Um, my question is for Mr. Button. Um, what's the? Was there any? Um, like, what's the difference between? Is the? Was the plot quite from the movie based on the video game, or was the video game based on the movie? The video game is based on the movie. Um, we finished the video game early and then the movie took us a lot longer to finish because we hadn't made one before and we wanted to get it just right. So we reanimated everything from the game, we added a whole bunch of new stuff, we relit everything. So the, the movie was made and written first, the video game was made and the movie came out first, and then the movie came out. If we do this again, it'll be less confusing. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank and that movie was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> supporting the property and for going out on May 21st and buying it and showing it to everyone you know. Uh, once again, I want to say uh, thank you and I thank you guys as well. would uh, like to show some appreciation for Charlie Schlatter. Christmas Charlie Schlatter. Gotta be KB and not that. Gotta be KB and not that. I tell you to go. Go down.